Hi there guys, as we approach the tribulation and the point of time when Yeshua says that I shall cut these days short for the sake of mine elect, lest no flesh shall survive or indeed be saved. And it seems that <clears throat> um, in that statement that you're getting a time when there's going to be a global elite that are going to be calling off over 90 to 95 percent of the global population and just how they're going to do that through the four things which are mentioned in the book of Zechariah pestilence, plague, famine and uh, the sword so like war and Daniel 11 speaks of the three world wars you got the Georgia Guidestones actually uh, got the actual, whoever the global elite are, they're obviously communists. Um, they see themselves as basically the rulers of, of the planet. Um, now are these people Christian? Well, they might pretend to have some religion. They might pretend to be Christian. And yet they do worship Satan and the fallen angels. Um, and so what you have, like the Church of Satan and all these, all that stuff, People that are outwardly proclaiming Satan and stuff like that, these are funded by the elite, you know, who uh, obviously like to keep themselves fairly hidden. You know, there's there's a number of families that are known out there um, to the world, and obviously this has been mostly through the internet the past 10 years that a lot of information has gotten out. And so uh, what we're seeing now is that, uh, you know, the technology itself, uh, that we use for the internet is going is being targeted um, to become a, a weapon um, to destroy humanity. And uh, one of the last tweets that David Bowie gave before he died um, was that the Illumin the Illuminati is Google, and Google is the Illuminati. So these are the people who um, control the media and the information that's out there. And these are the people who are trying to engineer a war between, you know, Israel and the Muslims, the Muslim nations. Um, like fanning, fanning the flames, in other words, um, of that. And there's always, there's always obviously a, a, a disagreement. There's obviously a difference between these religions, just as there is many Christian denominations. And so all these people do is just fan the flames of uh, the division. And instead of coming together and um, studying who the Messiah is, who in fact the Messiah is revealed in the Quran, but uh, it's the meaning of the Messiah that's changed in the Quran. Uh, the Messiah is the anointed one who comes to deliver his people from their enemies, but the enemies of God are sinners. And so it's very cryptic. Um, and yet, uh, it's almost like you feel as if you're like Batman, <laughs> you know, continually encrypting um, messages um, which can save humanity. And the message is that uh, fundamentally Yeshua is the Messiah and that you can't have salvation without him. God named uh this man, if you like, if you don't agree, he's the son of God, but he named him salvation. That's what Yeshua means, salvation. He came to deliver his people from their sins. Um, and so we got to allow him to do that, guys. I think that uh, in the last days, people talk about a rapture, and it's just going to be tweaked out of here. Um, but when? 5G apparently they're targeting that to come out as, as soon as next year. This all comes into alignment with uh, the mark of the beast, you know, which uh, you know the American president actually spoke about as well. Um, RFID chip. So this is the plan. They're bringing this out. They've already brought brought it out in certain certain nations um, in a business, I believe, in the United States. And you can look at these people in the eye and you can see that they're um, not just dead in their sin, but they're twice dead. These people are dead dead when I look at their eyes. 
maybe you can't see that, but I, I can. I, I, when I look at that video, these people are twice dead. Um, these people are heading to the lake of fire. That's the only thing they have to look forward to. And obviously, um, they don't have no peace in their life. They don't have any um, blessing in their life. Even that which they do have is like a, a burden to them. That's how they feel. I can see it in their eyes. They have no blessing whatsoever. You know, it's in the book of Proverbs it says it's better to be um, poor but be honest and remain in God's blessing than be rich and uh, basically condemned in your sin and dying in your sin. Because that money that you have is almost like fuel um, for the fire into which uh, you will go if you don't repent and uh, ask God for forgiveness and ask God who is Yeshua, who is Jesus Christ? Do I need him to enter into your kingdom? That's the, the prayer that I prayed and I was shown in no uncertain terms who, who Yeshua, who Jesus Christ was and is and will be and will always be. Um, he's not being created, he is in fact the creator of the universe. If you're a Christian you don't believe in that, I would really question your salvation. Um, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses just can't get their mind around that. A lot of Christians, so-called Christians today, can't get their mind around that. Oh well, uh, well you believe what you want, and well it's in the it's in the Bible, it's in the Word of God. John one one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. You want John three sixteen talking about God's only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall inherit everlasting life, eternal life, um, which means that when we believe in him our soul is imperishable as long as we remain faithful to him and of course the days we're living in is going to be a great test not just for humanity but for Christians you know that proclaim the Bible, that proclaim Jesus is the Messiah how can you also proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah and say that you follow the Pope who actually is in favour of gay marriage which is against the Bible, against the Word of God um, who says you can get into the Kingdom of God without Jesus Christ where the, the Word of God says it's Jesus only through Jesus Christ alone um, where the Pope says if you subscribe to his Twitter account that you'll get less time in purgatory when the Bible says there's no such thing as purgatory when your fleshly life ends you go to one of two places you go to eternal torment as it says in Daniel 12 verse 1 some shall awake to everlasting life and some shall awake to everlasting contempt torment uh, it's also described in Isaiah 66 the last chapter of Isaiah and um, you know the last few verses in that chapter um, where the worm shall not die so in other words when you sin and you have a sin problem you're addicted to certain sins that there's a worm that is created and that worm will feed on your soul for eternity if you don't repent of that sin when you repent of that sin that body and uh, the sin body is cast in to the lake of fire and you're given a, a heavenly body through the Holy Spirit you see what I mean that's it that's how that's how it works this is why you know uh, I believe John the Apostle um, when he was captured they tried to boil him in oil which is very I mean they crucified the rest of the Apostles and um, a few of them were, were stoned as we know but they tried to boil John in uh, boiling hot oil for some reason and he wouldn't die and so uh, he must have attained this, this, this body of righteousness from the Lord which is the Holy Spirit that no weapon formed against him should prosper and they tried to kill him and uh, they, they ended up taking him out to Patmos which was of course God's will where, he, uh, where Jesus Christ appeared to him in his heavenly glory and uh, we're not told what happened to John if he died or physically died or what happened we're not actually told that but 
he did write the book of Revelation. Now, maybe the Romans gave him parchment and ink to, to write, but it wouldn't really make sense, would it? I, I would imagine he would probably be um, thrown off the island. Um, they probably, probably have beaten him up. They might, they might have given him a canteen of water. They probably wouldn't have. They may have, okay. Um, that's that's kind of what they would have done. I, I would think. I don't think they would give him any provision, any food, any clothing, nothing. They would have just like thrown him onto the island and left him to die there. And yet, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him, and somehow. He, he was given parchment and everything he needed to write the book of Revelation. And it's such an incredible story. If you think about that testimony, it's an incredible, incredible story. Um, and some of that might happen to us um, in the last days. We might be taken to places where we don't want to go. We might be um, harassed by the authorities. You know, I, I've, I've had my fair share of that. Um, over the past few years. Obviously, sadly, you know, the United Kingdom are no longer Christian, even though it's the official religion. Um, you got to question why they don't, they don't just uh, say, well, the official religion is Islam. Why don't they do that? Because they're using Islam um, as, as a tool to, to bring conflict. That's what they want to use it for. Muslims should be very aware of this. And to my mind, um, I'm, you know, people are calling a lot of the attacks false flag. Now, I would question, there's a lot of information out there about um, the rulers, the elite, the, the pedophiles, all that stuff. So why don't the Muslim terrorists, so-called terrorists, go after them? And yet they're, they're seen, you know, driving up in pavements, knocking down pedestrians in London. And when apparently there's like hundreds of thousands of terrorists in the United Kingdom. Why can't they get together and destroy the elite, destroy the elite pedophiles? So again, you got to ask, why aren't they, aren't they doing that? Maybe it is controlled opposition. Maybe this is just a, a very <clears throat> limited, um, controlled, limited sort of threat to bring fear on people, again, to surrender their, their rights, like Fabian socialism, so that the beast can control your life. Um, that's that's basically what it's about. It's a psyop. Um, if you can't see that already, but that's what it is. Yes, it's a real threat, but at the end of the day, Muslims are human beings. They have a lot of them of family values. A lot of them are actually quite quite decent people, you know. So you can't just say, well, you know, Islam itself, yes. I mean, look at, look at the early stages of Islam. If you've ever read the Quran, um, it commands those who follow Islam to kill infidels, which to their mind is those who are not Muslim. But it gives more of a definition of what an infidel is. An infidel is someone who doesn't believe in God. Now, most of the United Kingdom, I would say, are people who believe there is a God. So you have to sort of cross that off. And there's a lot of probably innocent people who have been killed over attacks in Manchester and different places. The second thing is that you must believe that all the prophets written in the Quran are sent by God and one of these prophets is Jesus Christ who prophesied in Surah 1933 of his death and resurrection within the earthly body that he was given through Mary who had no uh, male human partner where copulated and had, had, had a child said that she was um, a virgin. That's what, that's what the Quran states. So it's a, it's a great dilemma for Muslims, you know, and they'll say, well, uh, well, we believe that when he comes back, he's going to die. It doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make any sense, guys. So Jesus is going to come back and judge the earth and then you're going to hope as a Muslim that Jesus judges in favour that, you know, he's going to allow you to continue to live or you're going to have some sort of eternal life with God. What's your hope there? There's no hope whatsoever. Once your human body um, expires, that's it. Don't, you don't get a second chance. 
you got to get right with God in this life. And so his name is Salvation, is Yeshua, or they call him Isa or Yesha. Mean, mean salvation of the Most High God. Um, you know, um, Muhammad, I'm told, means to praiseworthy. Well, I'm told also Ahmed means that as well. I mean, how can they both mean that? And so yeah, there's a lot of unclarity about the function of Jesus Christ within Islam and the Quran. There's, there's a great unclarity about it. And why does God himself say in Surah 355 that he would cause Jesus to die? He speaks directly to him. And then he says, I will contend against those who have contended against you until the day of resurrection. So this is like a promise that God gives to the followers of Jesus Christ. That God is going to contend against those who contend against the followers of Jesus. And so if you're a Muslim, you've got to follow Jesus Christ. So why don't you understand the words that he spoke? Why don't you follow his teachings? Why don't you understand he was the only prophet within the Quran who did miracles? And so you've got to really consider these things. Also, there might be a few other religions. I know who watch this channel. Islam, you know, there's, there's a famous verse in the Vedas which talks about the chief of the gods giving a part of himself to die for the sins of the people, the Prajapati sacrifice. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So, um, who, who fulfilled that? Of course, so the only one was Yeshua, or they say uh, Yeshu in, in, in some places in India and East Africa, which in Hebrew, it's not, it's not his name, it's, it's Yeshua. You've got to add that second part, it means salvation. It might mean salvation in your language, I hope it does, but in Hebrew it doesn't mean that. It would be good just if everyone could unite under the name of uh, Yeshua. It would be wonderful if all the believers could do that, because I, um, I believe uh, there's a conviction in my heart um, to, to speak his name, to share his name, to teach his name. You know, as it's also written in uh, Jeremiah, I believe it's chapter 12 which talks about that, uh, teach, about teaching God's name um, is important to, to our Creator because if you're going to worship Him in the appointed days and the new moons and Sabbaths and any other time and you should be worshipping God all the time but on the, the rest days to congregate uh, and to worship Him which I hope you're doing but uh, yeah some of you might say, well, I'm tired of this, and go back to Sunday worship, or Saturn's day worship, you know, which is not biblical. It's just not biblical. You know, it was introduced into Judaism about 300 years after the Messiah came. Um, it was introduced into Christianity about the same time, under Constantine, um, who wanted to separate Christians and Jews, and, and then separate his little empire um, religion called Catholicism which means Catholic means universalism which means that you have more than one God they are not monotheists um, they, they worship more than one God um, the, the Catholic religion right from the start and so it doesn't matter you know, if, if, if you're quoting some catechism, if you're quoting something from the 6th century, you know, the Nicene Creed, Catholics were already established, and it just continued from the Babylonian religions going all the way back thousands of years to Nimrod, the mother and child worship, which the Roman Empire always had. You know, if you went back to the time of Jesus, um, you would have noticed the same idols, the same mother and child idols in Israel, all around uh, probably places in the Middle East, all around Rome. Like the statues you see in your churches today do not represent uh, the Virgin Mary and and Jesus. They do not represent that. They actually represent Nimrod and I think it's Semiramis, her, his mother. Um, because they've been worshipping that idol for thousands of years. And you're deceived into thinking that it represents Mary and Jesus. It doesn't represent that. Because God um, commands that you should uh, neither make nor bow down to any idol. Okay, God commands that. Now if you have a covenant 
with God through the Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will teach you that, will renew your mind in, in the Spirit of God and actually uh, teach you about the true faith in the one true God through the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Son of God, okay? Um, the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. So, uh, yes, we have many, um, or they say that there are many ways to heaven, but there are not. There's only one way, and that is through Yeshua. And the Bible doesn't teach praying to Jesus' mother. The Bible doesn't teach praying to the saints. The Bible doesn't teach there's a purgatory. The Bible doesn't teach if you're a believer to have a dress. You know, um, this, uh, this guy in a dress saying that he, he represents Jesus with an upside down cross and all that stuff. I mean, that's it's very satanic. Very, very satanic. Like the satanic Luciferian order, they actually wore uh, white vestures and black vestures, white and black, which represents their religion. And what does it represent? It represents that you actually, it's universalism. You're actually worshipping light and darkness. You're worshipping gods which represent good, gods which represent evil. And you feed each one according to their decrees, according to what they ask. So they'll call on, sometimes they'll call on the biblical God, as Solomon did. Solomon had a ring where he could actually summon, I think it was 70 demons. And there's a certain book that he wrote that these Illuminati, these occultists have. And so uh, this is what the Illuminati is. It's, it's basically light and darkness, bittersweet, good and evil. And they're actually worshipping them both. They appear as, 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 you know, so they do this in order to appear as an angel of light, but they're an angel of darkness, they're agents of darkness. As the Apostle Paul says, that um, Satan appears as an angel of light. But in fact, his intentions, his motivation is to destroy, to lie, to steal, and to destroy. That's what he does. So he'll appear as like a friendly person at first. And if you're not falling for that, he might get aggressive. And then once once that mask is off, you, you, kind of, you can just laugh in his face then. He doesn't like that. So he might go off and he might try something else. He might appear as a female. He may appear as a little child. Okay, there's a lot of... Uh, Reports in the United States about the black-eyed children, which genetically engineered, I don't know, from from the, the Nephilim, the fallen angels. All this is real, guys. I mean, all this information has just gotten out there the past probably 10, 15 years. And it's left you with a dilemma. Should I believe there is aliens? Or if there is, what are they? Where are they from? Are they from hell? Are they from the heavens? Above? You know, Satan, Lucifer fell from heaven. He actually came from heaven. And so what? So that means that there is the, the third heaven, which none of us have really seen, except maybe in dreams and such, as, as Enoch himself uh, was taken to one of the throne rooms of God. And uh, he says like the sky was like the stars and lightning and described it all. And that there was tongues of fire surrounding the throne room of God. In other words, you can't get into the presence of God without the Holy Spirit learning the, the dialect of heaven. There's a language in heaven which you can't even communicate directly to God without that language. So that, that was the first patriarch that taught that, like about, what, four and a half thousand years ago? Um, so the gift of tongues is not a new thing. It's actually existed and it's just been brought out through the, the knowledge of the Messiah, who is the Son of God, who is the King of heaven and earth, the Word of God, okay, who's described as the Word of God in, in, in uh, the Quran, okay, figure that one out, we're meant to use our minds in order to love God with all our heart, mind and strength, we're meant to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, we're meant to seek God using all the gifts that we have, hallelujah. And so, yes, heaven is real. And uh, we have fallen angels. It says in the book of Revelation, a third of them have fallen uh, to the earth. Rejoice, ye heavens. The devil and his angels have been uh, um, cast out from you. 
but woe unto you, inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 13. We're at that stage, woe unto you, inhabitants of the earth. So these, these angelic entities have knowledge about technology. They've been getting them to build CERN. They've been getting them to build machines, more powerful computers, D-Wave computers. Um, and this uh, 5G, which is going to give more than 50% of the population brain, probably brain cancer, all kind of tumours and cancer. And that's before even the mark of the beast. Take the mark of the beast, you see all that the animals have, have been forced to take that mark, the dogs and the cats, and they produce tumours and they die within a, a year or two. You know, we're meant to believe that, oh, the market is fine, you know, it's just a, it's just a safety precaution against the terrorists. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they're proposing it as. And all these uh, kids who love their iPhones and their smartphones and all that technology, which, yes, yes, we can use, but there's, there's coming a time where we're just not going to be able to use this technology again. Because it's going to be deadly to us. And so that time is coming very, very fast unless we can find a way to fight this. But it seems to be that, you know, prophetically, God's word is coming to pass. And we should be prepared to die for our faith. My friends, if you're not prepared to die for your faith, um, you need to prepare your soul. Because when you're born again, you're meant to have died to the flesh. You're meant to have died to your old self and allow Christ to live through you in order for God to have his will achieved and done through you um, and yes sometimes we need other people to come in and we need to work together as believers sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't you know but all we can do is try all we can do is uh, try to execute God's will if you like um, which involves telling people about Yeshua about Jesus sometimes giving out Bibles Bible tracts, um, informing them of certain things like uh, the Mandela effect can really, sometimes that wakes people up. Um, sometimes Christians feel very, very threatened by that. Or like, you know, God would never allow that to happen. Really? God already warned these things would happen in His Word. You know, warn to them who add to my Word, I shall add plagues to them, one to them who remove, take away from my word, for their place in the new Jerusalem shall be taken from them, they shall lose their salvation. That's how serious it is. Now, which means God predicted that it would happen, there'd be individuals that Satan would use to actually do that, which is happening now, which has happened for the past hundred years, but it's happening on a level now that we we can't really understand, you know, that uh, it's affecting the natural order of things, like the time and laws, space and time. It's, it's affecting our daily lives. It's affecting our perception, perhaps, or maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's literally changing our physical reality. You know, these are, is it possible to do that? Now, could, could Jesus change physical reality? You know, somebody who, who can't walk, so he changed their physical reality in order to give them legs, to strengthen them, their legs, in order to walk. Someone who couldn't see, so he put his hand over their eyes and prayed for their eyes so that they could, so that they could physically see again. And then hopefully through that miracle that person come to God and then receive spiritual sight, receive the, 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 the knowledge of the Messiah which the apostles were used for. They, they laid hands on people. And I've heard of people saying, uh, oh, don't specify um, what, what uh, condition or disease you have. Just pray that Jesus heals you. Yeah? So why, so why did the, the, the blind man, you know, who's there and say, well, I got a sore arm, Jesus, you know, can you, can you, just, can you just fix my arm for me? No, he said he was blind, he wanted his sight. You know, so he was very specific. It's good to be specific when you're approaching God's throne. When, when, uh, because Jesus said, Ask anything in my name, it shall be given to you. So there's no point going.